Hello and welcome to this MA2 on PC tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to get started from the very basics uh, with your first show on Grandma 2 on PC. This video is going to be more like a quick start guide that's going to kind of gloss over a lot of the uh, minutia of the advanced features of this desk and just skip right into getting a show up and running for you. All the links to the software that I'm using in this video are going to be down in the description below, so make sure you download and follow along with the video. When we first open MA2 on PC, we're going to see a very blank, ominous looking screen just like this. We're going to consider this window that we see the command window. All of the other windows in MA2 are accessible through the uh, the soft buttons on the right hand side of the screen, say extern 1, extern 2, screen 2, so on and so forth. And those screens correspond to the physical screens that you can have connected uh, to the desk at any given time. But first things first, let's just get some fixtures patched so we can play around a little bit. To patch fixtures, we're going to go into setup, then patch and fixture schedule. MA2 works in user-defined layers. A layer can be anything from an entire universe of lights to maybe even just a set of types of fixtures or physical locations of fixtures. For example, I'm going to label this layer ground one. Once we've got our layer selected, we can go into the fixture window side of the edit setup menu and go to add fixture. From here, we can browse the library of a lot of uh, specific manufacturers and fixture models. I'm going to choose one of my favorites, the Martin Viper. And we're going to scroll until we find a fixture profile that fits the one we want. We're going to be using the Mac Viper Performance 16-bit mode. When we hit import, it's going to come up with the fixture wizard, which basically allows you to auto patch a lot of fixtures all at once. You can give them names and quantities, fixture IDs, channel IDs, and starting addresses as well. I'm going to go ahead and import eight vipers into this ground layer and start my fixtures at fixture ID 101 and channel ID 101. When we hit apply, it's going to auto patch these into our layer for ground one. Nothing in the patch is saved until you attempt to exit the patch and it hit save when you uh, get the warning that it hasn't been saved. At this point, I'm going to talk a little bit about the MANET control. In order for us to see what I'm doing with the lights, I have launched the MA3D visualizer that we can see uh, over on this other screen that I have. To get MA3D to communicate with MA2 on PC, you need to make sure that you are in an active session. You can tell whether or not you're in an active session by going into MA network control. And if you see a session ID that is green, and when you select it, just like we selected in our layers in our fixture patch, if you see that uh, your station or your PC is listed in that session ID number, then you are in an active session. Also make note of what IP address your station is. Uh, in this instance, I have 10.0.0.3 as my MA2 on PC um, station. So over in MA3D land, we want to make sure that our network settings, as long as you're in the same IP range, you will be able to join the session, uh, which I have already joined in MA3D, but if you are not in a session, it will look completely blank, at which point you will want to join the session by clicking on the session in the sessions list and hitting join. Takes a couple seconds, and then we can see the fixtures that we just patched. In order to more easily see these individual fixtures that are pretty much just laying on top of each other in MA3D, what I'm going to do is create a stage view in MA2 on PC. So I'm just going to open up any random uh, screen, doesn't really matter, and I'm going to create a basic window of a stage. And I'm going to go ahead and store this view on screen 2. Once we have our stage view, we can hit setup, and that will bring up uh, a bunch of different positioning options for our selected group of fixtures. So I went ahead and boxed all of the vipers that we have on stage now, and I can type in uh, x coordinates. So for example, I can do 
negative 4 through 4, and it will spread those fixtures out along that range. And then I can drag um, the encoder wheel to the position that I would like on the ground. So let's just say I like those on the ground at 3 meters back and spread between negative 4 meters and 4 meters. So there we have our eight fixtures. We clear out and everything is saved. To save the show file, just double hit backup, double click backup, um, and it'll automatically save your show file. In the main command screen now, I want to create a group pool so that I can more easily reference all of my fixtures here. So we go into create basic window, groups, and then this, uh, this auto saves, you don't have to save this view but I need to save some fixtures into these different groups. The little tiles represent different group numbers. So if I select channel from our objects up here, channel 101 through 108, then hit please, we will see that all of my vipers have been highlighted in MA3D and I can go ahead and store those to group one. I can rename that as Vipers. Cool, so now I can easily reference that. And just to make sure everything is working well, what I'm going to do is set the Vipers to full, and then uh, let's just uh, tilt them towards me, make sure we have everything looking good. So yeah, so far so good. Uh, make sure we have all of our colors and everything. Yeah, cool, now we're rocking. Let's go back in and add another layer of maybe some uh, some suspended 5R beams. So we're gonna go back into Passion Fixer Schedule, create a new layer, we're gonna name this Truss One, and then we're going to find some Elation 5R beams. 5R beam, beam 5R. In standard mode. Import, let's just do eight of them again, keep it easy. And we're going to name this fixture ID as 201. So our 100 series is going to be the Vipers, 200 series is going to be our 5R beams. And let's just change this to a uh, 2.1 universe. So uh, that might be convenient if we want to run two separate universes so we don't have to mess with more cabling. Uh, it can really uncomplicate some things. So let me just go over here, verify our patch numbers, everything looks good, and then save to exit. So now those two, or excuse me, those eight 5R beams just popped into my visualizer at, uh, at the center of the plane. So what I'm gonna do, create a group for them, 201 through 208. Please store group two, name it 5R beams. Great. Now we can select the 5R beams in our group pool and then go back into setup in our stage view and do the same thing that we did before. Negative four through four, please. And then since we wanted to suspend these fixtures, we're going to elevate them on the Z axis and let's just elevate them by five meters. But now we need to invert them by using the rotation uh, part of our stage setup. So we can toggle back and forth between position and rotation. Uh, once we go into rotation here, I believe sometimes this takes a little getting used to. If we do highlight here, There we go. So, yeah, rotate 180 degrees and they are now facing down. And we can move them forward and back. I'll move them back so that they line up with those upstage vipers on the ground. And there we go. We have our lights placed in our 3D, um, 3D program and we are ready to get programming since everything is patched and good to go. As we hop back over into our main command window, um, I want to specify that in this video, I'm not going to be going over using any sort of presets. 
this is all going to be using hard value programming. Um, the differences of which I'll probably get into in a later video, but let's just say that hard value programming is a lot less versatile, um, but it can be quicker um, if you just need to get a show up and running. So hard value programming is literally just what it sounds like. It is not referencing a preset. It is just saying, okay, Vipers, I want you to have your dimmers at 100%, and I'm going to store those values to an executor so that I can play it back. So now we have full control using this, uh, this fader executor that I've just assigned. So that's, that's the beauty of hard value programming is that it is really quick, but you lose a lot of versatility if you have a large rig and you need to be doing some more complex programming later. But for now, let's just have the Vipers on uh, our first executor and then store the 5R beams to our second executor. So now we have individual intensity control over each of those groups of lights. So now that we have both of our executors for the intensities of each of the lights up, we're going to program uh, some different looks for positions. So I'm going to grab the vipers and tilt them out or down towards the audience and then do the same with the five R's, just like that. And I will store that as an executor in this executor button section. Store it as 201, and when I clear this out, they will snap back to their default values. But if I hit go on this sequence, they will snap to that position that I stored. Now, if I want to create another position that is based on this position, I can grab the fixtures I want, and then let's say I want the beams to fan in. The, the method of doing that is using the align function. So we do align, align, align three times, and then tilt down until we are all converged on pretty much a singular point. And then with the vipers, let's just say they want to go up and then we'll do align, 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 align four times. And then now we have a totally different look for our positions. And we can use the align function with all sorts of parameters, not just positions. So we can do that with like a color fade, uh, different sets of gobos, focus, anything really. So now that we have the second position stored, since we've only affected position because it has our little red LED indicator um, on the, the position tab, we can store this as another executor. And if we clear it out, it'll return to the previous executor that is active. Now we can bounce between those two executors on that position, just like that. We can also add effects on top of our base position or our hard values that we just programmed. So to do that, I'm going to open up a second window here and create an effect pool. Just like that. And we see all these tiles that are totally open for us to do all sorts of awesome stuff. So what I'm going to do to create our first effect with the 5R beams is I'm going to first select them in our group pool, pop over back into the effect window, right click on an empty effect tile, and that will bring up our effects editor. So let's just say I want to do like a, an even odd tilt effect on the beams. So what I would do, I would add a line of effect for position. Confirm will take us to the effect line editor. And I'll explain a little bit more on this later, but I'll just do this real quick to uh, make things a little less complicated. We're going to set our pan to stomp, our tilt to sign. We're going to change the speed to, uh, we'll do 20 BPM. And then we are going to keep those values. Actually, I'm going to decrease this. We're going to do negative 30 to 30 for our high value. And then we're going to do groups of two. And now 
if I select the effect in here, we can see that once I've loaded into the programmer by left clicking on it, it has uh, started to run the effect. And that's pretty much the effect I wanted. I might want to add what's called a wing effect, which makes it symmetrical. So now it looks a little more symmetrical that way. And this is all stored in the programmer right now. So everything I'm doing is being edited in the programmer live. What I'm going to do is I'm going to store those values that are in the programmer into another button executor. So now when I clear this out, this will snap back to that uh, position's values. And I can still go between here and here just normally. But now I have the additional function of having this, uh, this even odd tilt effect. And I can still, without stomping the tilt effect, go between the two positions. So that's pretty cool. And then it just gets more complex from here. You can uh, change the colors of the vipers. Say we want to have the vipers turn to a magenta type color. Just use the color picker, store, store it there. Now you can assign that button to only be active while you're holding it down by doing assign temp and then selecting the executor. Now it'll only switch to magenta as long as you hold down the executor button, which is a cool, cool feature. Probably one of my favorite um, playback types is temp. I use it a lot. And then we can do things like uh, add strobe effects on another executor by going into beam, shutter. Oh, we're gonna have to do this one at a time. Shutter, we'll do max strobe, go over to the beams, max strobe, store this as another executor, assign temp, click the executor, and now every time I hit temp, it will temporarily strobe lights and then go back to its previous state. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much how to get a moving light show up and running in a few minutes on MA2 on PC. Of course, this is just the absolute tip of the iceberg uh, when it comes to moving light programming on this console. And hopefully if there's enough interest in these videos, I'll, I'll make a few more and maybe describe how I lay out my show files. But if you like this video, make sure to uh, leave a comment, like it, you know, that really actually helps out the video a lot in getting other people to see the video, believe it or not. And I really do appreciate any sort of interaction you have on my channel and my videos. So with that said, I hope to be bringing some more content to you shortly and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much.